Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for listening to our podcast and joining our friendship here as we talk about things that we share in our lives. And um, we have a guest today with us. Um, Sam Daniels is here. And we're excited to learn more about his work and just um, what goes on in his life, too, as well as um, just sharing what usually comes up. So um, I'm going to say hi to Ramey first. And um, Ramey, did you have a good week? I did. I did. Um, <clears throat> what did I do? Oh, I had I had two clients. It was really nice. Two new ones. And um, yeah, I, I know I helped them because they said I did. <laughs> I hope I did. Um, yeah, it was really interesting. And then my yoga person came back, and that was good to see him. He'll, he he's um, a beginner, but he'll he'll go real strong for every week, and then every now and then he'll take off every week. And I don't. I don't ask him, but he comes back and that's all I care about. So he came back and, uh, oh, and he told me he bought a Mito Red machine because I have one. It's, uh, uh, maybe I could show it to you. I can go grab it, but um, it's infrared and red. And I use uh, Jeff's feet, my husband's feet. But I've been using it lately, too, and I like it. And so he said he bought it because he has a, a heel spur or something. So that was that was nice to hear that he's open to my uh, questions. So, yeah. Uh, what else? That's it, I think. And Well, you had me yesterday. Had this session okay, so with you was, yesterday. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. yeah it was good. Uh, yeah, so we trace sessions. So I take her into trance-like state, and then I ask the questions that she wants to know. And um, yeah, so that was good. Yeah, and then I end with I, the meditation. Yeah, yeah, it was really nice. I connect um, with um, angels and ancestors and universal spirit, and. Um, ask questions, what I want to know about the universe and what I want to know about uh, things in my own life, like ancestors or yesterday specifically, I'm working on a couple um, sessions that I'm are, are new that I've been developing and I needed more information because I, I knew they were tied together, but I didn't know how they were, how they were tied together. And so that was kind of the basis of a lot of the questions. So that was um, fun. The sessions that I'm working on, I talked a little bit about last week here, but I'm doing a placental um, restoration or placental connection because our, oh, placental, energies, I was doing something our placental energies are oh, still yeah. in the biofield, just oh, like yeah. every organ in our body has a space in the biofield. So is the placenta and and I found where it was. And so um, in, in tuning the placenta, then um, I poured the released particles because I released those energies with the tuning fork and pour them into the, the third eye. And what I found was happening at the same time that I poured them into the third eye, their guard, the person's guardian angel came into their crown and filled them. And that happened to me um, by doing it by intention without tuning forks, but because I wasn't prepared um, um, voltage wise or electrically wise uh, through a, um, what I can do with the tuning forks, then it left me kind of discombobulated for uh, several weeks until I figured out what to do and that was another hypnosis session back in September that helped me find what I needed to do to um, help people and myself not be discombobulated when that happens. And then just a few weeks ago, um, I had a client had brought up to me saying, hey, I, I want you to do a Zodiac tuning for me. And so 
I kind of was figuring out how to do that. And as I was doing that one, it was like there's similar things that I'm called to do each time that are similar to the placental connection. And I wanted to know how they were connected. And so that was really cool. I I learned a lot yesterday. That was nice. Yeah. So, Sam, how was your week? How was your week? Yeah. Well, uh, my name's Sam Daniels. Uh, I uh, I had a wonderful week. Um, my business uh, is called Remember Touch, and uh, you can find me at RememberTouch.com. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I had three uh, clients yesterday, and uh, it was a wonderful experience. Um, I love helping people remember uh, their own power and, and how they can heal themselves. And my favorite thing to do is to help people help themselves. And uh, um, throughout my life, I've gone through uh, many opportunities to heal uh, my mind, body, and spirit, and uh, I think because of that, um, everything that I've gone through to help myself heal and be healthy and happy, um, it's given me a lot of compassion for um, people in general, um, so I love working with people and helping them feel better and um, using, um, I do massage therapy and reflexology and jin shin jitsu and uh, nature connection all combined to help people um, help themselves. So Jin Shin Jitsu, I wanted to talk a little bit about because it's a long word and uh, people don't know what it means a lot of times. Um, so Jin Shin Jitsu uh, translates in English, it's a Japanese word, to uh, the art of the creator through the man of compassion. and when it says man of compassion, it doesn't mean like a male, uh, male, female connection. It's man as in human. So it's the art of the creator through the human of compassion. And basically how it works is, uh, there's 26 safety energy locks throughout the body, very similar to how you would understand acupressure. Um, but it's a light touch therapy. So it's just about basically holding those points and what i wanted to go over with you guys today real quick and anyone that's listening is just the fingers that there's five fingers that are for self-help and i've been practicing jin shin jitsu about 11 years now on my on myself and um and with people and it's helped me a lot with my digestive system so we'll kind of go through the fingers so the thumb is the first finger, so the thumb is the stomach and the spleen. So when you hold it, you just take your other hand and you just hold your finger and you just relax while you hold that finger. And um, you actually wanna not squeeze tight, but relax your body as much as you can. And basically once you feel your heartbeat in your thumb or you feel harmony, and then you can move on to the next finger. So the thumb is about, um, again, stomach, spleen, and there's an emotion. There's more connections, but I'll just go over those three for now. Um, and the emotion for the thumb is worry. So if you're ever feeling worried, you know, there's people that get butterflies in their stomachs and it's connected. Um, <coughs> babies, when they're young, they'll come to the world, they'll suck their thumb, and that's how they kind of develop their digestive system so a lot of it's innate but it's just we've just forgotten um how we do things without even realizing we're doing them and it is a, like a light touch therapy so it's very simple so so does thumb, it matter does it ahead. matter how, if you put your fingers one way or the the it other doesn't. way it's just it's just holding okay. it just holding that finger. So it can mm -hmm. be in your palm as well as your fingers, or you want your fingers? Yep, yep. either okay. way is anyway. fine. Yeah, eventually it'll cycle through. So um, the, th the thumb, again, is stomach, spleen, and the emotion of worry. 
and then we'll move on to um I mean you can keep holding whichever finger you want, but the the pointer finger is uh kidneys and the bladder and it's the emotion of fear. So um that whole system is very associated with fight or flight. So just holding that finger helps like calm any sense of fear. Um basically the need to run away versus just being with something and feeling it. Um, so that helps with the bladder, the uh, kidneys, and uh, the emotion of fear. That's the pointer finger. And um, the next one is the middle finger. Middle finger is uh, the um, liver, gallbladder, and it's the emotion of anger. So that one's easy to remember um, because it's the middle <laughs> finger. Um, but uh, that helps with, you know, any frustration, impatience, um, any feelings of anger that, that come up. Holding the middle finger is always good. It helps the liver and the gallbladder. Um, the ring finger is the uh, lungs and the large intestine. And it helps specifically with grief. So when you breathe, it helps process grief. So it helps open the lungs, helps the large intestine oxygenate. So holding that um, ring finger helps with grief and breathing. So the next one, the pinky, is um, the heart and the small intestine. And it's all about presence. So the emotion there is called trying to or pretense where you're trying to do something or you're overthinking it instead of doing it. So like I'm trying to play the piano versus playing the piano. And uh, or I'm trying to do yoga versus doing yoga. There's a difference between thinking about it and actually doing it. So that's the pinky helps with presence in the heart and the small intestine. So each of those fingers you can hold at any time. Um, it's extremely beneficial. And like I said, you can wait until you feel your heart beating or uh, you just feel a general sense of harmony and that harmonizes those um, five fingers. And the last thing I'll share about it is um, there is an element to each finger as well. I know that's this is a lot of information, but at least it's recorded. Um, so I'm just gonna go over each one, the, the four things. So the thumb is stomach and spleen, and it's the emotion of worry, and the element for the thumb is the element of earth. So stomach, spleen, earth element, and worry. Uh, the pointer finger, is um, the kidneys, uh, the bladder. It's um, the emotion of fear. And the element for the pointer finger is water. So that's the kidneys and the bladder is obviously the urinary system associated with water. So it's easy to remember that the pointer finger is water element. Um, middle finger is um, the liver and the gallbladder. So a way to remember is like if people drink alcohol, sometimes they can get angry. It's affecting the liver, um, the gallbladder. Uh, that's the middle finger. And then um, the emotion is anger. And the element is wood, the wood element. So once you start to like become aware of the connections of things, the elements make more sense because wood is like, okay, I need to work with wood. How do I process my anger? I might need to chop wood. Um, I might need to um, eat different foods associated with these elements to support these different systems, or I might need to drink more water. So it just gives an understanding of the body as a whole. Um, and then the ring finger is um, the lungs, uh, large intestine, the emotion of grief, and um, it's the uh, element of 
metal, also known as air, but metal because the metals are in the air. And then lastly, the pinky is the small intestine and the heart. And it's all about presence and the emotion there is trying to or pretense. And then the element is fire <coughs> in Jin Shin Jitsu. So basically, when you hold these fingers, those emotions, those elements, and those organ systems harmonize. And um, it's not that the emotions are bad. The worry, fear, anger, grief, or pretense is bad. But it does help process those emotions so they're not stuck in the body. So it helps to remove stagnation that creates various um, symptoms and problems in the body. So it's just kind of cleaning those systems. And all you do is hold those fingers at any time. So I love it. And I love sharing about it because it's very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I didn't know those. I mean, I have a reflexology chart, but mm -hmm. I haven't like studied it to be able to remember it. So, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm familiar. Did I? I've, uh, this uh, gal and I, we used to trade sessions and she would, the fingers is what she would always um, stress and teach. But when mm -hmm. I had a session, I would lay down and she would put, mm -hmm. uh, she would always, for my metabolism, she would put both palms at the inside of the thigh. Mm -hmm. She told me I could do that when I lay at night because I have a slow metabolism. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we, so good. Uh, but nice. coming back to the small intestine, because I have celiac, mm -hmm. and when I do eat gluten, which isn't very much, but when I do, and if it start, my stomach starts to talk to me, I, I'll hold the, my pink finger. And it'll nice. Come. Good. Yeah. Yeah, she yeah. was talking yeah. about safety and, energy and, lock one. Oh, go ahead. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, and then this one, yes, it was always for fear, fear and this worry overwhelm. Yeah, mm -hmm. sometime at KU just a few years ago, learning my uh, mother and my mother's language, uh, I was um, overwhelmed because I remembered it but I couldn't apply it I couldn't speak it and so in class I would always hold my thumb or index finger my pinky I mean my pointer finger down in my lap and no one even knew yeah. what I was doing that that they yep. were watching me but but it helped yep. help me a lot good that's awesome thank you Sam yeah. yeah the safety energy lock one for your metabolism is inside of your knees and then it goes up inside of your thigh that's the it's called the prime mover so each of these they have there's more in-depth words that's why we we talk about you know what is digestible and not everything all at once because it would be too much and it really mm -hmm. is like a lifelong learning practice where i'll be learning about it the rest of my life and and i i love it and i i have seen like wonderful results and there's so much like self help and it's it's not difficult. It's very simple. That's what I really really love about it. And um, the the history of it is really cool. The it comes from Japan. Uh, Jiro Mirai was the the man that he said he rediscovered it. He didn't create it, but rediscovered it. It's a very ancient art form. And uh, there was a lady named Mary, Mary Burmeister, that brought it here to the United States from Japan um, in the West. And it, it kind of like, similar to how yoga spread, I guess, uh, Jin Shin Jitsu started to spread. When there's things that just work for people, they, they have a tendency to, um, I mean, if people are seeing good results, it just, it spreads and... Um, and so I think it's a wonderful thing, and I'm I'm honored and and very happy to carry these teachings on 
and um, it's nice to be a young person and be an advocate for um, such an ancient uh, technique. So I'm really happy to share it. Well, and you said that it's the index finger here that's uh, for fear. That's really part of the um, fight or flight. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, I think that could be so helpful. I mean, even um, I was just thinking for me, you know, so often, and I'm sure I'm not alone. I'm, I'm, I know I've heard um, um, doctors or chiropractors say, you know, they have some patients who they have found never come out of fight or flight. You know, mm -hmm. they can always find that reaction in their bodies. And so often it's like, even at night, I'll just, I'll wake up during the night and can't get back to sleep. And I realize after a few minutes, well, you know, it's my mind. It's, it's not like I'm really consciously thinking of anything, but it's subconsciously has kicked in fight or flight of some kind in, mm -hmm. in a, a worry pattern. And this would be any time you would find yourself with worry or or in that fight or flight, that would be something so um, easy mm -hmm. that you could do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's um, the pointer finger is, is the fight or th flight. If you get into the organ systems, because uh, well, the adrenal system sits on top of the kidneys. And so um, it's um, where adrenaline comes from when we go into fight or flight is on top of the kidneys. It's not the kidneys themselves, but it's that pathway, the kidney and the bladder. So that's like fear, like like if you wanting to run from something nowadays, it can be even if we're in our job, we feel um, fight or flight, you know, it can be any time. And then a lot of worrying, like thinking, when you're thinking a lot, that's more the thumb. That's more like be, becoming grounded, the earth element. Uh, worry. Um, it's about digestion. How do you digest those thoughts? So bring from your head this brain down to your heart brain, down to your gut brain. So the thumb is really helpful for like too much thinking going on, becoming grounded. If there's a lot going on around you, the thumb's great. If you're flying on an airplane, the thumb's great to hold. Um, eventually all the organ systems cycle through so that's why it's like you really can't go wrong holding any finger at any time and then paying attention to how it how it makes you feel and just like with anything as you practice more and more um you start to realize wow this is really powerful i'm now aware of when i'm feeling worried and i hold my thumb and i breathe and i'm now i'm able to like focus again and it changes your state and for me, I, uh, I do this all the time. I mean, I, I find myself, I'm doing Jin Shin Jitsu all day long, <laughs> wherever I'm at. And um, it's helpful. And like Ramey said with her finger, no one knew. You can hold your fingers. You can be walking in the hall with your hands behind your back holding a finger. And no one even knows. And it, it's okay. It's, you know, it's, it's not like it's a... Uh, um, I, I, I kind of joke, it's not illegal, it's free, and it's right here anytime, <laughs> it's okay. And so just holding your fingers yeah. throughout the day is is awesome. And yeah, no one, you know, is really judging or even knowing what you're doing. Not that that matters too much, but it is nice that it's it's just so simple and accessible. It's pretty handy. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Pretty handy. All you got to do is. Yep. <laughs> I, miss, I missed your joke. And so, and, and so is, <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And so is tapping. I mean, it's just right here. Right. It's I right know. Here. I love Pretty it. Pretty handy. Get it? <laughs> yeah. I but get um, it. it is. It's just right here, right here, right now. Yeah. And it is, yeah. it's, uh, try it next time, uh, Carla, really nice, a nice yeah, way I'll to try that. Down. 
Yeah. Often I um, end up doing psych K where you cross your ankles and then you cross the opposite wrist and then you mm -hmm. say it's for negative self-talk basically. So then you um, say mm -hmm. a very, very positive affirmation that counter affects the negative thoughts that you had. And um, I can always tell you, you breathe as you do it. And sometimes it takes a few minutes, but it's like, I feel myself going through a big change as it goes. Um, you know, sometimes my body's jerking around because it, it, just energetically, the emotions inside of me are changing. And so it goes from um, the whatever the emotion, like often it's, you know, um, low self-worth or, you know, unworthiness or um, not feeling that you're enough, but it can be fear, it can be anger, you know, anything like that. And, and then I feel my body go through those changes until I feel ease. And often I usually wait until I have a smile on my face automatically, not that I'm trying to smile, but it, it turns to joy, right? It turns to peace. And then, then you uncross your ankles and uncross your arms and you go like this at your third eye and do the same thing. Repeat the same affirmation as you do the deep belly breathing. And again, I can usually feel the same um, body changes going on during it. And I just do that and keep repeating until again, I have a smile on my face. And um, I, I like that a lot. Um, but the finger would even be less um, obvious, right, than mm -hmm. um, that. Like, I don't, what it reminded me right away was um, um, I had the, was on call for jury selection this week, right? And so, or this month, and thankfully the first two weeks of the month, um, the cases settled out of court. Last week I had to show up. And I, courtrooms um, automatically like hit me with fight or flight. Um, of, of a lot of fear because of my past. I was married to a drug addict and um, alcoholic who was abusive and he was in and out of court and in and out of prison for many of the years we were married. And um, so all those packages of emotions um, come back when I'm in a courtroom and, and I can think with my mind, well, it's not logical right but that doesn't help the emotions and i can breathe but a lot of times if i'm kicked into the fight or flight then um just the breath work doesn't take it out by itself so that would have been very helpful um thankfully i was i was able to get out of the jury duty i was excused uh, dismissed for cause they said because um i uh, honestly, I told him, well, I would have a biased opinion. Now, it probably wasn't the biased opinion that they thought. They probably figured I would automatically come down on the guy. It was a, a drug abuse charge of some kind. And, or uh, I think it was meth. The guy had used meth and some stuff had happened. Anyway, but my, my, um, feelings are not against the drug addicts, right? I, I made peace and um, friendship with my ex-husband before he had passed away. And as um, my son grew that we, that he and I shared and stuff. And so it's not that it's the, the, the legal system is broken, right? And it, it doesn't help the, those that are convicted it doesn't help the it hurts the families it doesn't help society and it costs so much money that they take and um anyway so all these feelings come back and that would have been helpful to um just to be able to be there and and sit there and hold it but thankfully i was able to like raise my hand and <laughs> tell them what i um uh, what I felt and so they let me off because they don't want anyone that's going to be have a um, biased opinion 
right? Um, or at least one side or the other doesn't. <laughs> um, so anyway, that would have been helpful to know. So, uh, Jiro Mirai, the guy that uh, rediscovered our something that's kind of cool about it is um, there is a science. It's a it's an art and a science in that he studied, um, he tracked the meridian lines in the body. Um, and that's where the finger associations with um, the um, organ systems and so on come from. And he, he dedicated his life to understanding it and healing. And he did, um, uh, he worked with homeless people first and then, well, on himself for many years. And then uh, eventually uh, it, it translates over to animals as well, which is awesome. Um, there's charts for horses, dogs, and cats. And um, also, if someone else even that you're working with is feeling something, anger, fear, worry, grief, uh, they can't, they have trouble being present. They're, they, they're trying to do things versus doing things. They're, they're overwhelmed. Um, any of those fingers, even if someone else is experiencing it, you can hold your own finger for them. So it's the whole mm -hmm. help yourself yeah, like, to help right, like a hologram. Yeah, yeah. and so you're you, you're in, embodying advocate, it. not the advocate. What's that word? The, yeah, where you take the person's place. Yeah, it, yeah, and it's very helpful, especially for people that are empathetic or they can't tell if it's their feelings or the other person's feelings that they're feeling in their own body, and it really to make it super simple it doesn't matter just hold your own finger you know you you can't force them to you know that's how you can help yourself and through helping yourself you're helping them so that's a great thing to um, yes. remember if someone is experiencing something like that as well so there's many opportunities for it what about um because you also do I've heard from Ramey and Jessica that you do craniosacral work, right? And massage? Well, I'm not trained in craniosacral work. Um, I incorporate reflexology in what I do with the ears, hands, and the feet. Um, I will work with the head, but I'm not trained. I want to get trained. That's like on my agenda because. Uh, you know, um, there's two practitioners that I've gone to for a long time that both do cranial sacral work, and I love it. I love it for myself, but at this stage, um, you know, I, I can give a good head massage, but I'm not trained yet in the actual cranial sacral release techniques. I just do okay. jin, jin jitsu massage therapy and reflexology in terms of uh, okay. as a massage therapist, yeah. Well, maybe I misunderstood, and it was someone else that I rem that they were talking about. I haven't met all their yeah, friends. Yeah, well, or you know, <laughs> so, don't know. It, yeah, I I think that's in my future. So um, once I get the training, I'll let you know. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. yeah, I'm always yes. wanting to learn. I love to learn new things Me too. and. To hear someone talk and then think automatically, okay, well, how can I apply this to my work? I did that, oh, I don't know, a few months ago. I was hearing someone talk about um, sonic soul retrieval, and it was like, oh, well, I mean, that's a no-brainer for my work. I work with sound, right? And so I thought, so mm. anyway, so you just hold that intention and kind of think about it, and it's like the, the next... Um, client I had it was like okay universe you know I kind of knew it so follow me right I mean it was like the universe says okay follow me I'll show you what to do and the opportunities come up right away so nice that's, that's good. awesome now um it, it's talking... George that does it okay George yeah I haven't met George yet um, maybe he can join yeah. us on the podcast one day too oh he would love it he would love it Okay. All right. Well, we'll have to set that up next time um, or even do a foursome one day <laughs> instead of waiting until one of us can't, um, yeah. has to miss. 
Ramey and I use lots of intuition in our work, right? And mm -hmm. listening to the the spirit and and I think like I love chiropractic and mm -hmm. um I've been telling my chiropractor it's like you know, a lot of what you do, if you tune into the universe, you know, out to the spirit around you and listen, it's like you could even go much deeper than you're going, right? You could, you could, um, and you could know that much more what is needed in, in something than just going th with your mind through stuff. And I think his, some of the things he does is intuition, mm -hmm. but I was trying to encourage him to do more. So do you notice that in massage? Do you mainly go from like mind and what your fingers feel, or do you mm -hmm. use the intuition too? What do you think? Uh, I would say 100% um, that I use the intuition. How I like to describe it is I do my best to listen and respond to the body or the person that I'm working with. So um, it's it's not really about me. It's about how can I listen and respond to what the body's saying. And um, the body does speak. Um, it might be silent or quiet, but it is always speaking and, um, you know, there's communication with, um, I mean, some people there's like the other day I was getting into a man, animal communication where you can communicate with animals and they can communicate back to you. It's a very similar dialogue that I have, um, between myself and the person that I'm working with and that it's, um, it's not about, it's not the words as much. It's, um, I'm listening to their body and I'm able to sense what's going on with you know their organ systems through Jin Shin Jitsu, the muscles, tendons, and ligaments through massage therapy, and then basically the overall health and well-being of the body through the reflexology. So I just use the tools that I have. Um, I've done Reiki, some Reiki training uh, at two, but I'm not a, a master or practitioner of that yet. Um, but I love, uh, I feel like there's so much information that comes when um, I'm more tuned into the energetics, the auric field of the body. Um, so at this point, though, I'm mostly focused on the physical tissues of, um, you know, muscles, tendons, ligaments, organ systems, food, nature connection, very physical um, remedies for people. So, um, like, for instance, um, I was going to mention in April, uh, April 21st on a Sunday from 1 to 3 p.m., I'm going to do a nature connection class. And that's a big part of my background, too, is um, I went to a nature connection school in Oregon for a long time. And um, it's from an Apache elders teachings about our senses and about awareness. And for me, that was very important in my healing. So my own healing. So when I was younger, when I was in quite a bit of pain, uh, massage therapy was one thing that really helped me. Um, I think touch is really important for people. And I think a lot of people are deprived of touch, especially touch needs to have the proper intention. So my um, Remember Touch, my business, is based on when we were all born, our mother, most of us, our mother held us at one point, and we felt what that felt like. And it was a feeling of being taken care of and being held. And I, when I'm practicing remember touch it's about helping people remember that there is this healthy feeling of touch there is this feeling of being held and it even translates to them being able to hold themselves 
and being able to um, be held by the earth that provides, um, you know, food and nourishment. So whenever I'm working with people, I incorporate all these things, uh, food, nourishment, nature, because I don't see it as a separate thing. It's all how to be a healthy, happy person. So um, it honestly depends on the person I'm working with. That's why I say I practice listening and responding. So I, I think I answered your question. Um, so yes, yeah, I use intuition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Intuition, I think, is an amazing skill. And I think another way to describe it with just other verbiage potentially is um, communication that's beyond words that's um that is a heightened sense of awareness when you're paying attention you you can notice oh you know that kidney or that um part shoulder needs more work or attention it's just paying attention and the more that i practice um the more I become sensitive, just like with anything, the more you practice it, the better you become at it. So um, I'm going to be doing this for a long time and I love what I do. So good. Um, good. Yeah. Yeah. I like to um, listen to my body also. That's kind of what you're talking mm -hmm. about. Um, uh, one of my favorite ways to do it, though, is to imagine um, as if in central channel breathing where you're imagining that you're pulling in, you know, the connection or the, the energy from the sky or from the oneness into your crown. And, and then as it goes through my body, I just go really, really slowly and um, try to put my eyes on the inside of me, right? And not that I'm picturing all the muscles and blood and, and everything else, but to see inside and then as I slowly eases past the body and sometimes it goes back up and comes back down um, the, the feeling or my um, focus on it, then I get to the part of my body where I feel that resistance or that um, pain perhaps um, inside and then I stay with it focusing harder until it it's it's like you know you see diagrams of this the spiral spinning through your DNA mm -hmm. you know you might have seen um, videos mm -hmm. online about that or whatever and it's as if that's inside and I see it and and it finds the point where it started right or where it, where it's hardest wherever it is in me and then I can focus on that and until it releases yeah. nice yeah, that's how i like to do it anyway but. i like that <clears throat> uh <clears throat> when i work with uh, women who have been through a lot of trauma and they don't um they don't like themselves they mm -hmm. it's really evident to see the they don't love themselves. And so when I use the hypnosis, I will tell them that whenever they get a, um, a negative thought about themselves, because I always ask them about their inner talk. And when they get a negative thought, and if you're out in public or you don't have time, uh, one thing I do is I, I do tell them to take the thumb and the two fingers. So that's uh, fear and anger, because you're both when you're talking to yourself, you know, and I just tell them to press the thumb. And I tell them to say, delete, delete, delete. Mm -hmm. And, and it usually goes away. But what will happen, sometimes people are so uh, resistant, right? And then I tell them, just imagine that thought go, the negative thought going up in the air, and it breaks up, combusts, and comes back down like flowers. So that's nice. a nice image, because when you're doing nice. that, you're delete, 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 delete. And then I see it going up like a firecracker and then coming down like flowers. And then I tell them to take their arms 
and just hug themselves just mm. and then the other side and if they have a mirror in front of them i tell them to look in their left eye and i tell them to say i love you i love you and um it works so we all have our ways to help others mm -hmm. especially um people who are so hard on themselves because they've been through a trauma and sometimes they take it on as if it was their fault and it, it's right. it's not their fault and i tell them that too and i right you know we time. we go into the forgiveness process and just forgive right. forgive everyone you know because um a really good thing to do for yourself so yeah. so We're, we have a, a spot next week right carla next week mm -hmm. would you like to come back sam yeah i'll come back all right i'm okay. so thankful okay. to have this opportunity so carla it's really great to meet you and Rami, uh, it's nice always good to you. see you and um likewise I'm very thankful and yeah i have i do have more to share there was things that were coming up so i think uh part two would be good because there's more to share so all right well very good well we yeah. can discuss find a time and a date um, for next week after we end here and so um that sounds great yeah and you can um, give me your website information again, or you can say it now yeah. again. I'll try to remember to put it in as a link down below yeah. too. So. Okay. Yeah, it's it's very simple. It's remembertouch.com. So okay. it's yeah, yeah. Very good. Very mm -hmm. good. Okay. And, well, thank you. And you probably want to um, you probably want to list your class if if people the nature are connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. it at your mom's place? It is. Yeah. April His mother 23rd. has a beautiful, beautiful land mm -hmm. and she mm -hmm. does a lot of nature yep. classes. And yeah. So, yeah, we can mention that too. So, yeah, lots Absolutely. of good stuff to share. Yeah. And I look forward to talking more about nature next week because I um, have a, a big connection with nature also and something planned for March so with nature Sweet. so that sounds good. great yeah. very good so good. um we'll go ahead and end for today and thank you guys Rain, sam and thank you. thank you everyone for watching and hope you have a nice week